We're now going to be looking at some faults connected to junctions. Remember, I'm going to commit the fault. Sean will do it correctly. See if you can identify the fault. I'm going to turn right at the roundabout. Made a made a signal. Mini roundabout. And we'll be looking for the fault. Identify the fault. Correct, I drove over the island itself. We're now going to be taking the second road on the right. Again, see if you can identify the fault. Checking the mirrors. Offside mirror. Signal. We look at the road markings. Did you identify the fault? I drove two sets of uh, yeah, the arrow there. I drove over the wrong set first, and the signal was also slightly early. At the end of the road, then we're going to be turning right. Again, remember, be looking for the fault. Did you identify the fault? The fault was approaching far too fast for that junction. At the end of this road, I'm going to be turning left. Again, remember to be looking for the fault. In this case, there'll be more than one. Middle, middle signal left. Did you identify the fault on the last junction? There were actually two faults. The first fault was I drove over the chevrons. Remember what the purpose of the chevrons is for. Sean will explain that shortly. And also, when I emerged, I was only looking to the right. I didn't look to the left until I was actually into the road itself. So just to play that back, I drove over the roundabout on the first junction. On the second junction, I took it into the chevrons far too early. There were two roads very close together and the signal was also slightly early. The third junction was the speed on the approach, and at the last junction that we've just done, as I say, I didn't look left until I emerged onto the road, and of course the position I was on the chevrons. Sean now will show you the correct way to do that. So the mini roundabout ahead, I'm going to be turning right. So I'm going through mirror, mirror signal, reducing the speed, got a raised roundabout, so I'm going to go round the roundabout wherever possible. There may be times when you can't because of the size of the vehicle or the position of the roundabout, but when you can, go round it. So I'm going to be taking the second road on the right. I'm looking ahead, I can see we've got the ghost island, the chevrons down the centre of the road, and I've got two roads close together. So I'm going to the mirror, mirror. The first signal is going to be my brake lights. And then I'm going to put a right turn signaling so I'm not going to go into the hatch markings and then entering the protective right turn box, reapplying the signal as it was already cancelled. At the end of this road, we're going to be turning right. And as you can see, we've got a lot of vehicles close to that junction. So we've got to anticipate what might be happening and approach the speed suitable. So it's mirror mirror signal. And that way we're in total control of the situation, making sure it's still safe. Do the observation, both directions. Got part of vehicles on the right, which is going to creep it out, keep up the observation whilst we're emerging. 
So at the end of this road, we're going to be turning left. And on the approach, I can see on the left-hand side, we've got some chevron markings there. That's to put us in a position so we get the best possible view out of the junction, so we can see in all directions. We've got a road immediately on our left, so I'll have to be aware of traffic that may be emerging from there as well. Good look round, making sure it's safe, and then proceeding. Making sure I didn't click the junction of the road next to me as I came out. Now just a brief recap on the drive we've just done. On the approach to the mini roundabout, I assessed that there was a, a mini roundabout there. It was a raised one, which means you need to go round the raised section. Even if it's just a flat painted disc, you should try to go round it, unless there's a very good reason not to. If you have a number of lanes on the approach to the roundabout, then you should select the appropriate lane for the direction you're taking on the roundabout. The next junction we came to, there was the central protected island, or the crosshatch markings painted on the road. Again, that's there to separate opposing traffic for safety reasons, to give you a good safety margin. Because the two junctions were close together, the second one, which is the one I was taking, meant that I needed to delay my signal slightly, so that I didn't cause any conflict or confusion to any other road users, and it meant that I entered the protected right turn at the appropriate time without going into the first protected right turn for the first junction. The next junction we came to had a large number of vehicles parked on both sides right up to the giveaway line. There was a restricted road width, which meant that I had to anticipate any other vehicle that may have turned into that road, so I needed to approach that junction at the appropriate speed which in that case meant me changing down to first gear a little bit earlier than I would do normally. The final junction we came to, on the approach you could see there was a crosshatch marking on the left. That is there, again because the two roads were so close together, so that you would be put into a position by obeying those road markings so you had good vision into the new road. When I was emerging, not only was I looking right and left into the road I was joining, but I was also paying particular attention to any other road user that may have been emerging from the road on my immediate left. We're now going to be looking at making a right turn from a major road into a minor road. Prepare the car to move away. Next road on the right, so it's interior mirror, offside mirror, signal right, Positions just left to centre, looking well down the road, there's nothing coming towards me. Start looking to the road where I'm going. Did you identify the fault? It was cut in the corner. Sure, now we'll show you the correct way to drive. So we check the interior mirror, the offside mirror, giving a signal. Position just left of centre, there's no oncoming traffic. Looking into the road, I can see there's a parked vehicle, so I'm going to change into first, turn at the point of turn so I can go down the centre line of the road, so I'm in the correct position once I've entered the road and not appear from behind a parked car. So if you saw there, it was all about forward planning into the junction to make sure it was the correct position on the approach. I'd taken notice of what was in the road because that was going to affect how I turned. But I made sure I didn't turn into the new road without knowing what was there and what was possibly coming towards me.